Hey, what's happening, folks? Uh, Matt and Ryan here at DFS Five Pack. So we got uh, Saturday breaks down weird this week because it's opening week. Usually we cover the night stuff uh, for MLB on Saturdays, just to reiterate a couple of things to people. We are going to do the night stuff like normal, the write-up and the members-only videos are going to come for the night stuff. But since the day slate is really long like this, we just want to shoot out a quick video for both uh, you know, paying customers and just you know, everyday viewers and stuff like that. So we're going to run through the full slate real quickly, and then we'll do you know, like more of a normal video for the night stuff. I also want to do this for me so I can go over this slate so I can put some lineups in. I got you on that one, my friend. All right, before we get into that, I just want to reiterate, everybody should be checking out Overlay. Um, one of my favorite things about Overlay, and we touched on this yesterday, is they got these like $5 bonuses up right now. So despite the fact that I haven't been able to cruise into the top 10% on any of the contests I've entered so far, uh, if you can beat this guy, King Hap, who I think is uh, he's some kind of radio host, and if you beat his score, you double your money in like the $2.50 one. So I haven't finished in the top 10%, but I've beaten him two out of three times, which again, not exactly life-altering money for me at this point, but uh, it's always fun to win and have extra money in there. Um, they got a lot of different contests up for them. I doubt we're going to have an opportunity to get into the early one. If we do get a shot, we'll talk about the later one. Other than that, we'll be on here about at least every other day at the minute. I'm going through the slate on our own, uh, but these contests are up there. We got NBA starting next week, where they got the big jackpot that goes along with it. And before you know it, unless somebody takes it down today, I mean, it's going to be a $2,000 prize for uh, going 12-0 and 0 in the $22 contest. So go win yourself some money. And the last point I'll bring up is I love how on overlay, man, if something happens, if like Clayton Kershaw gets scratched at the last minute, it doesn't mess with everything. They just remove something like that off the board. So if you don't have time to really sit down and do lineups, it's a quick way to get some skin in the game. For sure. I will say just on that note, though, it was nice. Like, I know everyone was up in arms about Kershaw being out, and that was annoying, and it was annoying. But how much nicer is it in baseball when, like, and that's a big guy being out. That's an opposing pitcher, like, one of the best pitchers in the game still, you know, regardless of how far, how far he's fallen. In the NBA, if you get, like, a mediocre, like, sixth man out, it changes, like, the entire team. So it's nice, like, not having to change everything when one guy in baseball's out. I'll say that at least. All right, we're going to run through each game real quickly, talk about if we think the offense or the pitching is applicable or if it's neither. Uh, one nice thing about today, uh, if you read through the weather report real quickly, it's really just not a concern. It's hot, but it seems to be pretty hot everywhere, so you don't even really have to think about it. No, and one other thing I'll say, kind of just as like a, a lead into this slate, the pitching is a lot worse. Oh, God, yesterday. yes. I mean, oh, my God, not, is it? It's not like all scrubs, but it's a lot a lot worse than yesterday. So uh, again, side note, I watched the entirety of my Brewers taking on the Cubs yesterday, and Matt and I were talking about this beforehand. Kyle Hendricks added a curveball this year, and if anybody watched that game on ESPN, like even A-Rod was gushing about his ability to throw that into his arsenal and how it's going to give people issues. Like Hendricks was great yesterday, so you can't guarantee he'll be like that every time out, of course, but he was masterful, and other than the three singles by Arcia, there was barely any other decent contact by the Brewers. And I'd like to say that we just didn't have a good day, but Hendricks deserves a lot of it. He was amazing yesterday, so keep your eyeballs on him. Good to know. All right, guys, as far as the Brewers and Cubs games go, I think, you know, starting at the pitching, I'm not looking to use my boy Curb and Burns in the slightest. Uh, do you have any interest in Darvish in this slate? I mean, no, but... I'll say that, like, he might be – isn't he the most expensive pitcher on the slate? Yeah, I think so. So he might be, like – he might be the best pitcher on the slate, like, talent-wise. And Milwaukee certainly didn't look good yesterday. Now, no. you just talked about it, that Hendricks was awesome. And I'm not going to go to Darvish at 10-5 at here. But if I had to pick one, Darvish or the Brewers' bats, I think I'd go with Darvish. Agreed 100% on that point. No arguments right here. Um while I'm also not excited about paying 10-5 for Gar uh, Darvish, I almost called him garbage. Uh, they almost rhyme, but that's not what we're talking about. While I'm not excited to pay that much for him, there's a lot of cheaper bats today that I like, which makes it more, which makes the ability to pay for him as just like a default a little bit easier. The Brewers were striking out like crazy yesterday. Darvish can do that. No guarantee that happens today. Uh, because again, Hendricks was amazing yesterday, but I can get on board with Darvish purely because I have cheaper bats that I could use that make it a lot easier. And I, there's no pitcher I love on this slate. Like we both loved Flaherty yesterday. He made a lot of sense. 
He was rock solid. I don't have anybody on the slate I feel like I can just pencil in. Agreed. 100% agreed. All right. Um, as far as, like, you know, catchers go, again, I got nothing right there. I mean, if you want to punt with Caratini at 3,300, I can get on board with that. Yeah. I mean, what kind of pitcher is Burns? Uh, uh, Burns was really good two years ago, and then he struggled a lot last year with his location. He has good stuff. Uh, hard fastball, but he was really struggling with his location last year, so he took a big step back, spent some time down in the minors. He's not a scrub in the slightest. They like him a lot, uh, but, you know, it's a $3,300 catcher. For sure. I'm just, like, any interest in Cubs bats here? Um, I could be interested in Carantini. Um, you know, Rizzo hit himself a home run last night. I couldn't believe it. He got hit on the hand. I couldn't believe what he's a tough guy that he stayed in the game like that. So I'm not really trying to go there, but watching a bunch of these at bats yesterday, Carantini did look good. Uh, got Kipnis's first game. Chris Bryant, as I was telling you, looked the best. I feel like I've seen him in a short time period in a couple of years. He was on a lot yesterday. The numbers didn't really play it out, but he had some really good at bats. So I could get on board, but I'm not really looking to spend 5100 on Bryant. And Ian Happ had a nice home run, was having a hot spring. But again, he's a nine-hole hitter, so it's hard to want to pay 4K for him. The problem with the Cubs, they are priced up like an elite offense. And like in tournaments, I get going here, but they're not like an optimal play with those price tags. Unless you just like cheaper pitching and can go anywhere you want. That's about it. Uh, as far as Brewers bats go... There's enough bad pitchers on this slate. Really, I have no interest in going after Darvish, who does give up home runs, but there's nobody on Milwaukee that uh, is even really on my short list. Same. Especially because, like, we moved to this next game. Like, how can you not like the offense from Baltimore and Boston today? I mean, we got a matchup right here, a pitching matchup of Perez and Cobb. You know, there's a reason both of these dudes are under 6K. Clearly, Boston looked real good yesterday as kind of a chalkier team to build on. They were absolutely killing it. So I have, I mean, Perez had his moments a couple times last year, and we know Baltimore is not good, but I have no interest in the pitchers here. No, me neither. None. I think where I start getting some interest for me personally, and correct me if there's anything different, like right away, like you can give me Hanser Alberto, who was awesome against lefties. He's only 3,700, and because he plays for Baltimore, you can't expect him to get an abundance of love. No, both sides of this game are firmly in play, no doubt about it. And then I have to assume Peraza had a great day yesterday. He made a bunch of my lineups because he was dirt cheap, so he's on my good side right now. But they bumped him up to the five-hole today. Under 3K, five-hole against Alex Cobb in that Baltimore bullpen. I mean, give me some of that. He's going to be chalked. So in cast games, lock him in for certain. All right, after that, Devers is pricey, but you can talk me into anybody on Boston today, and I'm sure you're probably similar to that. Any anyone in this game is in play, no doubt about it. All right, moving over to like shortstop right here. I mean, you got Iglesias as the three hole hitter, shortstop for Baltimore, and Baltimore's terrible. But Martin Perez, you know, he's not Chris Sale, he's not Clayton Kershaw. No, he's not. Oh, no, he's not. So, and then again, JD is still too cheap at under 5k. So, the thing about JD Martinez, and you and I were talking about him the other day because we featured him on the video. Uh, he doesn't have speed like Yelich, Bellinger, and Trout. But when it comes to just pure hitting, he's right up there with the greats in the game. So it's hard not to take a look at him at 4,900. He's also dominated Cobb in his career. For sure. So anything else from this game you wanted to I mean, I don't think he's getting off at 3,900. Yeah, Verdugo in the lineup. Like, I'm not sure how high on Boston's going to be today. Um, a couple places I've seen that they're going to be a little bit under owned. So okay, I, mean, I don't. You won't sneak up on anybody though. Of course not. I mean, under owned means they're not going to be as highly owned as they should be. Not that they're going to be like unowned. The problem was like last night they were just so obvious because there were so many good pitchers, and today there's multiple less than seller pitchers going. Mm-hmm. All right, let's. Uh... You know, we talked about not wanting to use really pitchers or bats in this game yesterday, Minnesota versus Chicago. My God, both of these teams, you know, they look – they were some of the few teams that look good offensively, and they did it to, you know, Berrios and Giolito. So there should be some offense in this game. I know you were high on the White Sox this year, and they really started out swinging. They did. This is another game where, man, I'm seeing the Twins. Another, like, 
I think the Twins are going to come in lower owned than they should again either. They should again as well. I'm not like really wanting to pick on Keuchel, but man, the Twins are just good. They could just rake, right? Like they raked last year. They set an all-time home run record. Their lineup is just as good this year. Uh, Nelson Cruz better. is a guy you could take a look at. Yeah, their lineup's better with Donaldson. Great point. I knew there was something, and I completely forgot about it. So glad you brought that up. Uh, Cruz has dominated Keuchel and has always been good against lefties. So he's right there at the same price as J.D. Martinez. And, I mean, I would expect J.D. to get significantly more love than Cruz. I do. I, I agree with that as well. Okay. Uh, Delmonico is not a great player, but Dobnek is also not a great hitter. And you got Delmonico in the six hole at 2,500. If you need the cap space, that's a great punt play. I was going to just ask you about the White Sox offense and what your take is today on them. Well, I know you are bigger on the White Sox this year than I am, and you definitely one game into it. There's not a lot of sample size, but they looked like those bats will be swinging next year. I have zero issues with going to the White Sox. Me neither. I will say, though, a point we talk about a lot, I feel like a lot of people want to play the White Sox because they're the up-and-coming, shiny new toy. Not saying that they're not necessarily going to be like chalky today, but do you agree with that sentiment? Um, I don't think I have an opinion on that quite yet, but I mean, you're the one who's been bigger on the White Sox, so you definitely have paid more attention to them, so I would default to your expertise on that one. They're definitely, like, I'm not the only one that's saying they, I think they could win the Central. They're definitely, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a popular, you know, like, a, they're, they're a team that, like, a bunch of people are picking to, like, come out of nowhere, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Mankata started off swinging yesterday. I mean, this kid's got talent beyond talent, so... At 4,700, his upside is right there with some of the best players in the game. Yeah, the thing about the White Sox and like why they're in play as a stack, and we, we even talked about it you know, yet, a couple days ago when we made the video with Giolito and Barrios. Both these offenses now can hit home runs. So like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, you can always make a case for using guys on either one of these teams. And the, yeah, the White Sox play in a stadium that's conducive for hitting home runs, right? It, it's a tiny ballpark. So this isn't exactly going out to San Francisco and expecting to hit six bombs out there. Amen. All right, moving over to uh, NL Central teams. Uh, you got Trevor Williams taking on Adam Wainwright today. For me, this is mostly just uh, I have zero interest in this game. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not really interested in these pitchers. I don't need Trevor Williams singing you know, salary relief or anything like that. Uh, I don't really want to pick on St. Louis. I'm not interested in playing Wainwright at 9,200. If there's anything from this game, you can always talk me into a Yadier Molina, you know, sub 4K in the middle of the lineup. But outside of that, I don't have much. Yeah, I mean, Wainwright's just too expensive. Yeah, this isn't Wainwright of old. Was there anything in this game that kind of tickled your fancy? Not really. I mean, Pittsburgh's not good, but I think we also saw yesterday, and we saw this last year, they don't strike out like an absolute ton. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I don't think Wainwright will get blown up here, but, I mean, nah. I, 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 this is a game I'm not really interested in. I, I don't really like the St. Louis offense. I think it's boring. You're right. We talked about this yesterday, right? No home runs and no stolen bases in it. It's just not a, it's not a stack that can win tournaments very easily. No, I think their biggest, like, power guy is O'Neal, who homered last night. They don't have Ozuna anymore. Goldsmith's old. I don't like I don't like what St. Louis has really done with their team, to be honest. No, like, if you want, a, like, a one-off, like a Reynolds or an Adam Frazier who are dirt cheap, I mean, fine if it fits your lineup, but this is just a spot that I'm not really giving any attention to. Yeah, pretty much the same here. All right, let's go take a look at Tampa Bay and Toronto on the quickity quick. Uh, Yarbrough is a guy that I do have passing interest in. I know he threw over 80 pitches in a game earlier this week, so he's relatively stretched out. I don't love any other pitchers on this slate, so he's a guy I'm looking at, but it's not like I'm like, dude, you got to play this guy. I was looking at him too. I'm just, I'm really not excited about picking on Toronto. No, I will say this about Toronto. While they have some nice up and coming young hitters, I do expect them to strike out at least a decent amount. I agree. But I'm not, you know, trust me, when I say, like, Yarbrough's a guy I'm looking at, I hope nobody watching this video takes that as Bellman and I being like, yeah, you got to play this guy. Like, he's in play, but it's only because the pitching options, which sadly for day two, are already deteriorated and not very good. We haven't even mentioned anyone since Darvish that's in play. So that's it. And he, he's affordable at 7,300. And I kind of feel good about him going out there to get me 10 to 15 points, but... I don't expect a tournament-winning type of performance. You know I'm a Yarbrough fan, so I, I know. Sure. 
He's not my bro. He's your bro. Yeah, he, he's not a stud, but he's solid. And when he's pitching well, like, if he's on today, he can easily mow through this Toronto lineup. Absolutely. As far as offense goes in this lineup, was there anybody you're looking at? Tampa or Toronto? Either one. I mean, I think that Tampa's in play. They're expensive, though. Yeah, that was kind of the thing is they're real pricey. And Shoemaker is not a scrub, right? Like, he's not an elite you know, pitcher by any stretch of the imagination, but he's no scrub. He's no scrub, although when's the last time he pitched? Last year? I don't know. Last year? I don't think he pitched last year. Did he? I think he pitched a little bit. Okay. Um, I can't remember him. So, I know he pitched for the Angels a couple of years ago. Yeah, I want to say, like, he threw limited innings last year, and he was good, but it was very limited innings, so it was a tiny and almost non-applicable sample size. I don't remember what you're talking about. And then he got hurt. Oh, yeah. It was early in the year, too. And then he got hurt. He, like, tore his ACL or something. Yeah. But he was good before that. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely a scrub. Interested to know how long he pitches, though. Exactly. So, I mean, from a pitching perspective, I have zero interest in Same. him. But I'm not lining up for expensive Tampa Bay bats either. I'm not lining up for expensive Tampa Bay bats either. And one thing about Tampa that I think is going to be tricky – they have a lot of hitters that I think they're going to mix and match, like throughout games. Agreed. I agree. They did it a little bit last night. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. No, that's like the absolute worst in DFS is when your guys get pulled. Like when you use a 2,800 guy that might get pinched hit for, that's fine. But like when your guys are getting pulled, you're done. Are you referencing my Jake Lamb call from yesterday who started with a double and a walk and then got pinched hit for? No, I was Exactly 2,800. No, I wasn't. That's great. <laughs> been a really long double. All right, man. Uh, let's take a look at Colorado at Texas today. A couple of okay offenses with not great pitching staffs. Well, their aces came out yesterday, or what you want to consider aces, I guess, and they pitched very well. Uh, in this game, you could talk me into Mike Miner. I know you're not a big fan of Colorado's offense, especially away from home. Uh, Miner had a real nice season, and while I don't think he's all necessarily – a guy like you see 9K, you're like, I got to play him. There is not a lot of pitching to love on this slate. So Miner was another guy I was looking at. I can definitely get on board with him, too. I ended up with some pieces of Colorado's offense yesterday, probably more than I wanted because they ended up with so many lefties in their lineup. And they just missed a couple of balls. But, man, they're just, like, not good. And I'm interested to see what their lineup looks like today. You know, obviously, you got to get through Story and Arenado. And those guys are in play as one-offs if you don't use Miner. Absolutely. Um, story looked good yesterday too. So, I mean, I agree with you and that pitching is not like ripe on this slate and mine is definitely in play. I'm not excited about it though. No, I'm not excited about it either. I'm a hundred percent with you that both story and Nolan Arenado are in play as one-offs, uh, or as a small mini stat between the two of them. Uh, they're both, I guess the way to look at it is appropriately priced. Uh, story might be a bit heavy, but that'll probably keep his ownership down. Um, Texas is a, I forgot about this when we did a video the other day. New stadium. They now have a retractable roof, so when it's real hot out, the ball isn't going to fly quite like it, it did closed. in the old stadium. Yeah. Last night, too. So Yeah, it gets hot down there, man. It's hard to sit through a baseball game when it's that warm. I'll say that Story and Arenado are, like, expensive, like, for the matchup with how, you know, other pitching on this slate. You know, you really have to prioritize them. Um, Absolutely. And as far as, like, the Texas bats go – Look, I never – John Gray has done everybody in the DFS world dirty enough to know that it's a real tough play to play him. But I'm not really ever looking to pick on him outside of Colorado because when he's good, he can be very good. I don't think he's crazy today either. No, I don't think he's crazy. I just – I don't think I like him quite enough to play him. But if I saw somebody with a John Gray lineup, like I could never be like, oh, that was a dumb play. Yeah, he's in the mix for me. Okay, Awesome. Mostly ignoring this game, though. Miner's got an opportunity to make a lot of oh, guy I want to say, though, from Texas that looks good, and I actually wrote him up like in options, and he got the only RBI double is Odor. He like, changed his approach at the plate, and they're, they're raving about him. He crushed in, in spring slash summer, and he's a guy that we know when he's seeing the ball well, he's good. Right, and Odor, while he is not a great overall hitter, does the thing that DK rewards. He hits for power and can steal the bases. So he's a guy who can always be in tournament winning lineups. So he's definitely a guy I could see one off in here. Yeah, I can, I can get on board, no questions about it. All right, we got Miami at Philly. Uh, Alcantara looked real good yesterday. Um, 
take from that what you must. DD had a nice premier game. Uh, I don't love Zach Wheeler here, but if you have the money, I can understand why you would use him. Miami had a decent game yesterday, but they're not a very good baseball team. I think I'd rather use Wheeler than Darvish. Okay. Uh, you know I can get on board. I'm the bigger Wheeler fan out of the two of us. He strikes guys out. That's a good thing. I hate, like, part of me is, you know, Milwaukee looked bad yesterday, so why not just go back there? Then the other part of me is like, man, is Miami really going to hit well two games in a row? Is Milwaukee really going to suck two games in a row? It's and that. I, deep. I, go, go ahead. ahead. I, was, okay. I watched the entirety of that Cubs-Brewers game. I don't think anybody would have looked good against Kyle Hendricks yesterday. For me, it's like just the – the DFS, you know, mind fuck that always is, right? Like, I feel like if I go with with Wheeler, then he's going to get hit. And if I go with Darvish, then he's going to get hit. You know what I mean? Yes, we all know exactly what you mean because we've all been there and had it happen to us too many times. Uh, what about Caleb Smith, who was really good to start last year? I like Caleb Smith. I can't do it here, though. This Philly offense is good. Alcantara was good yesterday, though. I'm glad I didn't use any of the Philly offense. It didn't matter, but... He was good. I used DD once and Bryce Harper once because I just happened to have the exact amount that Bryce Harper was. And I was like, ah, I'll give the guy a chance. And, you know, DD did well for me. So he's on my good side. Um, yeah, it's much of the theme of this slate. I can get on board with both Wheeler and Caleb Smith, but neither of these guys makes me super excited. I also like, I, if this were in Miami, I'd be much more interested in Caleb Smith. Of course, right? Great pitcher's park, whereas Philly – while you hear some complaints on the batter's eye in Philly, we all know it's a real small park that's conducive to the home run. Yeah, so I, I, I'm not, like, too interested in Philly bats, but I'm not going to use Caleb Smith. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, no doubt about it. Um, I don't feel great about it. I, the, like, the only thing that makes me thinking about Caleb Smith is, one, the price, and two, how good he was to start last season. So maybe he's a strong opener. But that's one season. That's not enough of a sample size to think that's something to lock in. So, Offensively, though, are you looking at anybody? I was going to say, though, for your Caleb Smith points, like, I get it because we're really grasping for straws on this slate. So, like, I, I mean, those reasons, while they're not great on this slate, they're applicable. Uh, no offense I'm really looking for on this slate. I mean, I think JT Romuto is a great play at catcher, but he's hella expensive, and I'm not, like, prioritizing the Phillies. So, I forget which analyst I was listening to last night talking about San Francisco uh, and the Dodgers. And when you put it this way, like we know that there's a huge talent discrepancy between these two teams, right? But when you put it this way, it almost just like blew my mind. And he loaded up. He goes, if you took all 30 guys from the Giants and all 30 guys from the Dodgers and you did a draft, how long would it be before somebody actually picked somebody off of San Francisco? It's a good question. Um... Like, they were trying to make arguments, like, if Buster Posey was there, he might crack the top ten. That's no. how much better the Dodgers are than the San Francisco Giants. It is overwhelming. He would not crack the top ten at this point, and I'm a Posey fan. I mean, only because he's a catcher, right? That's the only reason that, like, maybe somebody would want him. Yeah, someone would want him, but, like, I could think I could list ten players on the Dodgers that are more valuable than him. I'm not arguing with you, man. You're the bigger Posey fan. Trust me. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. I just thought that when he broke it down that way, like everybody who knows even a little bit about baseball knows these two teams, these two teams have a major talent discrepancy, but that's almost mind boggling. Uh, yeah, that is. When you think about it like that, it's very interesting. So speaking of which, I like Alex Wood today. What about you? I can get on board with Alex Wood. Uh, you know, you're always a little scared because of the lower pitch count with him, but San Francisco's awful. Yeah, I am a little worried. Two guys I like pitching-wise on this slate, I'm worried about their pitch counts, so we'll get to the other guy in a little bit. Um, okay. And Wood's one of them, so this is a, a matchup, though. He's priced affordably. I mean, between Wood and Yarborough, it's really tough for me. I slightly prefer Yarborough just because I think his pitch count's a little bit longer. Uh, but you know how much I haven't respected San Francisco's offense in years. So getting me to pull a pitcher against them is not the toughest thing in the world. And as far as this game goes, like, I don't know, guys. Like, how do you not take a look at Max Muncy, who's already raking and only 4,400? Any idea who's coming in for the Giants? Like, I know they're using this, like, the opener thing. Do they? Uh, no, but there isn't really anybody on their team that I'm concerned about. So I was just wondering, righty or lefty. Yeah, I definitely don't know. But, I mean, just looking, 
Look, guys, the problem with the Dodgers this year is you'll never sneak up on anybody with them, right? Unless they're going up against Max Scherzer, they're going to have love every single day. But Muncy is still way too cheap. Uh, Turner's, you know, he's 4,500, but he's already playing well. Corey Seager had three hits last night. He's only 4K. And then you move to the outfielders like the, you know, Bellinger, 5,300. Of course he's in play. Betts is in play at 5,200. Their whole team's in play almost every single day. A hundred percent. I mean, that's had like a late RBI single last night. Muncy's absolutely crushing. You have to expect Ballinger will get going at some point. I mean, these guys are, Bats and Ballinger are averaging 10 points a game. They haven't done anything yet. <laughs> well, I think that's from, that's from last year, isn't it? Oh, is it? I'm like, yeah. Uh, everybody from the Dodgers is basically in play every single day. So I don't feel like we have to sit here and tell you guys that anybody who knows anything about baseball knows the Dodgers are beyond loaded. No doubt. So... Uh, Muncie and Seager were the two guys that are super affordable that, you know, it's tough not to give a real long look at. All right. Um, much love to Oakland last night. I fell asleep before the game ended, but the Olsen home run, I think Chapman had a triple and everything like that. I had an Oakland Boston stack, um, did decently, but of course without Hendricks or Bieber, you weren't winning anything. Yeah, exactly. It is nothing major. That's MLB. Um, I could go right back to Oakland here, though. Against Dylan Bundy? Why not? Got he's going an elite, he's elite night. man. Come on. They got going late last night. They were under-owned. Bundy gives up home runs. Oakland during the day. Man, I wasn't even thinking about them that hard. But now that I'm looking at it, like, why not? My big question is, any chance you think Dylan Bundy, who's looked really good at times, pitches better for a new organization? Yeah, definitely. I think that's oh. For sure in play. I'm just not sure today's the spot. Agreed. Uh, there's a lot of ignore in this to me. Like I'm a bigger Manaya fan than you are. I'm not using Manaya or Angels bats. Mm-mm. That's kind of how I am on this one. I like Manaya, but I'm not. You know, the Angels' offense isn't as good as it's going to be. You know, without Rendon in there quite yet, and you get to neutralize Otani just the tiniest little bit with the lefty. Uh, but I still think I would rather use if I'm going to go expensive Zach Wheeler. He's too expensive for me, for sure. Um, I think he's right on, like, the Yarborough, Alex Wood tier, and I'd rather spend 2K last on those guys. I mean, I, if Man- I think if Manaya were, like, 7,800, like those other guys, he'd be right in the mix for me. I'm not even sure he'd be a lock for me there, so I'm certainly not using him here. Yeah, the, the 10K guys today are not locks at their price, and he could, you know, fits right in that mold. The big difference is today it's a little easier to make lineups with Boston being so cheap. I would rather use Wheeler and Darvish than Benaya. Gotcha. Uh, I'm not going to argue with you on those points at all. Um, Sounds like you might have had passing interest in Bundy. No, 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 no. I'm not picking on Oakland. I'm not going to go after Oakland in the daytime with Dylan Bundy. I just, I'm not as interested in picking on him as I have in other slates. Fair enough. So I'm uh, mostly going to ignore this game personally. But I'm with you. Oakland did fine for me last night. So you know how much I like Loriano. Chris Davis is only 4,100. I expect him to have a better season. So all these guys are, you know, I wouldn't say they're out of play. Well, they're definitely in play as far as I'm concerned. Full stack. I mean, got going late last night. Your boy, Matt Olson, another late game home run. And I swear some guy tweeted that I saw this morning, he goes, if Olsen homers here, I'm yeah. going to lose 250K. It was McMahon from yes. uh, FI Insider. Yeah, so he, I mean, he still got, he still won 100K, so I don't feel too bad for him. But he, Yeah, I don't feel bad for him, but that's, definitely, that's rough. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely very rough. I mean, we talk about that all the time. We're sitting here like he still won 100K, but when you're in that position and you just lost 150K because of, you know, Olsen hitting a grand slam, I mean, yeah, it hurts, no doubt. And a guy like Olsen who homers every 20 at-bats, I mean, what are the odds that that's going to be one of them, right? 5% about. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's a tough one to, to swallow. So this is the other pitcher I'm interested in, McCullers. Lance McCullers? I can get on board. Seattle's not good. This is another yeah. – it's like using Dodgers bats. Picking on Seattle should be on play almost all year. But I'm worried. I'm, I'm worried about McCullers' like, pitch count. Yes, agreed with you 100%. I'd rather use Yarbrough personally. He was uh, – like, I was looking at him this morning for all the reasons we've discussed. Uh, what about Houston bats? Because yes, while I, the Dodgers and Red Sox will get love, 
I'm with you in the S sense that, like, well, people want to play the White Sox. People hate the Astros and don't want to use them. For sure. One more thing about McCullers, though. I agree, and I, I'm not sure I'll use him. The reason he's intriguing, though, is because he's got big-time strikeout upside. Like, sure. he's a guy that can strike guys out, and if he's, you know, pitching well, I could easily see that. Houston bats are in play. They're just very expensive, and it's not going to be where I land. I kind of – I respect Iwan Walker as a pitcher. Like, he could suck today, and he can get blown up. But I don't think he's a gaff cam like, at all. No. Uh, like, and- he's, a, he's erratic at times, but he's also, you know, that also means he's very good at times, right? Yeah, he is wild. Like, he's got, to me, some like Trevor Bauer from like four years ago in him, where he like, doesn't necessarily put it all together. But when he's pitching well, like, he's good. He's got good stuff. And I know he's been hurt for the past couple years, but I know that he was the guy that was on Seattle, was traded in the. Shit in the Mitch Haniger deal and went to Arizona, pitched well for them for a year, then got hurt again, and now is back in Seattle. So, you know, maybe he's comfortable here. I'm not interested in Houston Bats too much, to be honest. Okay. Uh, they in, To piggyback off what you said earlier, they are pricey, so they are a tough stack to go to. So I don't think I'm looking at a lot from this game. I was definitely looking at McCullers just like you this morning. I just don't think I quite get there. And I will say about Houston Bats, like we, I talked about Chicago earlier, they're always in play. Like, Certainly, Houston is always in play because they're freaking good. I mean, they didn't hardly do anything last night. They ended up with eight runs, you know, at least one home run. So, yeah, for sure. And then the other man, I, what about Max Freed? I was looking at Freed a little bit. Sure, I can understand that. Um, I think he just falls out for me, but I can't fault anybody for going there. The guy that I think makes sense, though, going against him, if you're looking for some cap space, Cespedes, you know, Looks like uh, he had some good at bats yesterday, including the home run. He is always a good hitter off of lefties. He's only thirty six hundred, and we know he has power. Yeah, I'm a Cespedes fan, man. I, I like this guy a lot. Um, I like what he brings to the game. So certainly in play as off. And then to be honest, I don't. He's got wanna... a three game homer streak right now. <laughs> uh, what's that from like four years ago? I don't. Yeah, wanna... It was eight hundred and some days or something. They said. Now I also don't really want to pick on that. However, this matchup is so much better for the Braves than it was yesterday. And the Braves are better than Mats. Mats is not a gas can by any means. But if he's off today, I mean, the Braves are another one of these teams that can hit home runs. And they're good. And they are going to be very low owned, in my opinion, here. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those. They have that stack, too, in the beginning, like with Acuna, Albies, and Freeman. Um, you know, Freeman doesn't steal a ton of bases, but he's capable, but they got power and speed all over in the beginning that they are the type of team that can win tournaments. Yes, exactly. They are that team that you just talked about, like, uh, St. Louis is not, they are. All right. So, uh, I think you guys understand like Boston and the Dodgers, um, just, you know, they did it last night. They make a ton of sense today because our offenses are good and in pretty good spots. Um, you know, you're not sneaking up on anybody with them. But they're both wildly in play, I think, is the top chalky overall offense. Is agreed? Yeah, for sure. Um, and then again, there's a lot of weak pitchers on the slate, a lot of lefties. Okay. Gun to head right now, 90 minutes before this starts. Who would be your two pitchers if you had to start there without having money in play or anything, like without worrying about where your offense was going? Which is kind of how I usually start. So, yeah, like same. Um, I am kind of liking Yarborough, I think he's solid. Um, Miners in the mix. I don't think I'll land there. It's tough. I think that if I had to choose right now, we'll go to the next page on the games, if you will. Right here? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to get here, but Yarborough and Wheeler. Okay, because I was looking at Yarbrough and Miner or Yarbrough and Wheeler. I, you know, I can definitely get on board with Miner, and his strikeout upside is real too. So maybe if I do three, I mean, if I do three lineups, I like to pitch, pick three starters. So maybe that's where I go. Yeah, and I think uh, if money wasn't an issue, like Wheeler might get the tiniest little bit of bump from me. But like, what do I get with that extra extra eleven hundred? Does it get me like an elite hitter versus a non elite hitter? That's where it might help me make my decision because it's right there. I don't love either of them. They're, they're very close for me. They're very close for me, too. I would rather get up to Wheeler, though. So see if I can make it work. 
Gotcha. And again, you guys, you can afford hit. You can afford pitchers today, even though they're not great. Like there are cheap bats like Peraza that'll make roster construction significantly easier. For sure. The other guy that is firmly in the mix for me is Alex Wood. Yes, Alex Wood. So I mean, even if you really wanted to load up on bats, you could double up on cheap guys. Because I don't love Alex Wood and I don't love Yarbrough, but their upside isn't significantly different than like Manaya and Wheeler. Mm-mm. So, anyways, guys, that's what we got for the early one. We'll pound out some night information here quickly. Um, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Thanks, guys. Oh, website's opening up. Sign back up. Love seeing all these new customers come back. We appreciate that. Let's get it, guys.